Nice to meet you, Barry. to all of you. Uh, I don't really have a topic tonight, so I figured I would just answer some live questions, see how you guys are doing. Hello to you all. Um, but wow, you guys are firing a lot of... Uh, <laughs> I, have, I have a Flanders stash? Yeah, it actually... So someone, if you're watching this in the, uh, feed, in, the <laughs> in the replay, someone said I have a Flanders stash. And I can see that. I can see, I can see the Flanders. I gotta trim it up there. Um, hey, hey! What's up? Yeah, hey, Scott. Scott uh, asked me if I saw Trey's new rig, uh, Trey Stasia from Fish, and I just caught that uh, picture, Scott, and now it's like, now they have all the pictures? I just like <laughs> write to someone and be like, order all of this. Order all of this. So I thought that would be, uh, be really funny. Um, did I don't know. I Look at, whoa, Cheddar. What? You're, you're a fish specialist now? By the way, okay, I have to make this a, um, <laughs> a special announcement. Hold on for one second. Here's my daughter. What's going on? <laughs> Yes. Daddy? Yes. One second, guys. I have a big hole in my oh, okay. I'll come check it out when I'm done. But keep your feet away from it so you don't tear it open. Awesome. My my daughter has a hole in her in her blanket, but we'll fix that later. All right. So, <laughs> good night. Um. So, um, where was I? Yeah. I, Cheddar. Are you? First of all, if you guys go to Cheddar Kung Pao, if you go to his website, he's a great video where he gave fish an honest, honest try. And uh, and I really appreciate the video. I will make um, I, I will make up the feature video, like I said. But like you should watch it because it's from the eyes of someone who doesn't really know about fish. And he kind of like he hasn't really rejected them. But afterwards, he commented that he started listening to him a little bit. But then he just chimed in as if he's doing some research on fish. And now I'm 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 uh, curious. Uh, this is the this is the deadbolt. This is the Fred uh, guitar deadbolt. I was just playing it. Um, <laughs> so uh, there we go. So uh, and it sounds really good. What's the prettiest chord you know? Well, major sevens are the prettiest chords. I mean, you can't get any, in my opinion, you know. Um, somebody just asked, what's the major, um, <laughs> what's the, what's the uh, happiest chord I know, prettiest chord? I have to say, um, I have to say the major seven. It's just so balanced. I, I like balanced. Um, I, I, I like the, 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 the uh, song, The Deal. Somebody asked, uh, uh, if I like the song deal. Yes. Um, oh, and, uh, and Kaylin, how are you? By the way, uh, great reminder. I have a uh, contest out, which I should have closed, um, about, uh, um, writing your own blues song <clears throat> in the style, not in the style of Stevie Ray, but there's a contest I had. Some people have entered. Um, I'll announce the winner next week. So if you have some people that can give your videos thumbs up, whatever, go get those thumbs up for a close off lesson. And I mail you a pedal, which, oh, it's right down there, the Nux uh, pedal. Um, and so get that going. Somebody said that D sus4 is their favorite chord. It's nice, but suspended chords want to go someplace. You know? So really quickly, you know, the, um, this is, uh, our, our, our guitar. <laughs> no, no, they are not. They, <laughs> they are not. Um, so do people solo in major and minor scales or just pentatonic scales? They solo in major scales. Um, and minor scales. The question is, do they solo major and minor? Yes, uh, depending on the style of music, um, it, it, all different styles of music have um, um, certain lead types of styles. You know, rock and roll is really pentatonic based. When you get into like the minor blues, like minor blues, like real minor blues that starts on minor chords, you tend to use the full minor scale because it's so colorful. Um, in country, in flavorful country bluegrass, you tend to use more of the major scale itself, or maybe even a mixolydian, depending on what you're doing. Um, but uh, it depends on the style of music, and it depends on how much you um, want to put in as extra color. But you know, don't lie to yourself. If you're thinking about playing a major or minor, uh, stick with the pentatonic to start, because the pentatonic um, always sounds good, and it's going to have the core structure of what you're uh, what you're looking for. Um, so there you go. Okay, anyway, so this is just a live Q&A. Uh, ask me anything from guitar stuff to any of my 40 questions I answered with Sean Daniel. Um, and, uh, and just in case anybody wants to know, yes, I'm going to the, uh, um, I am going to the rescheduled Den Company shows. Um, any hints on, oh, hold on, hello, hold on, I saw this. Uh, can you tell me about this E minor, C, D, and A? 
Okay, so really, I love these questions. Okay, so really quickly, Benjamin Brenner wins the question right now. Uh, so hold off. Uh, hello, Ian, can you tell me what key this is in? Okay, so he, he writes E minor, C, D, and A. So right off the bat, Benjamin, we don't have necessarily a key. You actually have two keys, but the majority of your song is in the key of G slash E minor, um, being because you have an E minor, a C, and a D. And uh, right there, that's the six, the four, and the five of the key of G slash E minor. Okay, so like when you're trying to figure out keys, majority rules, like majority rules. And then that A chord is a borrowed chord from the key of uh, D, probably you know, D and A. Um, so you would have you would have to label this with one sharp being the key of G, knowing it's a relative minor, starting on the E minor if it does, uh, and then. When you get to that A chord, there will be some accidentals listed in in the um, in the staff. But you you're, you're in the key of uh, E minor slash G, and if you're wor worrying about soloing over that, you can solo over the E minor C and D with an E minor pentatonic. And when you get to the A, you can use an A major pentatonic, something like that. But that's the majority of your key structure. Okay, next question. Let's see where we are. Sorry, I missed everything while I was answering. <sighs> How you guys doing? <laughs> How about gaining more speed? Um, not for shredding, for just those bursts that are most uh, great in solos. Okay, so, oh, thank you, Edward. Um, Edward, okay, so I'll say first, uh, so okay, so I'm gonna take this, the, the question uh, about speed, um, and Edward said that was awesome, so thank you all, <laughs> thank you, Edward. Um, okay, so I will tell you right now, I'm not motivated by super speed. I'm not, um, <laughs> I'm not, um, oh, hey, you're in your stock room watching this. I'm not motivated by super fast guitar players. Uh, I'm I'm really not. That they, it never caught my ear. I was never dissuaded by it. But most of my guitar players that I really really enjoy are like kind of sloppy. Like don't don't hate on me, but like Jimmy Page is awesome. He's super fast, but he's still sloppy. He's got some grit to his playing. Trinastasio is pristine uh, on albums, but live in concert he's a little sloppy. And uh, you're right, they do have these short bursts. So. Um, <laughs> something like that anyway so um when when it comes to speed i'll tell you this speed in my humble opinion is a byproduct it's a byproduct of practicing your timing and your technique now i will tell you, you might have heard this again um timing is i don't want you to be um confusing timing with tempo okay timing is not tempo tempo is a byproduct of good timing and good technique. So what I mean by that is, you know, when I was learning You Enjoy Myself by Fish, and I, this is like, oh my God, oh my God, probably 20 years ago, you know? Uh, the opening line, th this. You know, it took me forever and it, it, it plays fast. You know, but I never, the, the, whole, the whole entire idea was for me to, you know, practice my good technique of stretching to each note and making sure that my timing was like a timing belt of a car. Even if I was going slow, everything was timed out. And then the more you practice your technique and your actual timing events, your speed comes. Does that make sense? I hope that made sense. Um, yeah. Wait. Uh, should I pro <laughs> There's a question from one of my personal students. Should I practice scales repeatedly or focus on specific songs? Well, Jonathan, that's a great idea. That's a great. Well, first of all, Jonathan, I have to make your video. Don't think I um I, I forgot. I'm gonna make it after this live feed. Um, the question is, do you practice scales or what was it or uh, specific songs? You should practice both, knowing what you're doing. If you're looking at the question is, do I practice scales or songs or scales and songs? If you're looking at a computer and you're you're going by tabs. You know, if you're going by two, four, five, two, four, seven, two, all this stuff, don't, um, don't do that. You want to practice your scales, knowing what your scales are, knowing um, the not the notes, but the shapes generally. You want to know the notes eventually, um, and um, then you want to, if you're looking up core, if you're looking up songs, you want to know the core. But he's he's really, or you're really 
uh, fast and pristine and tight. And, you know, he, I mean, if you listen, really listen to him in, you know, 74, 77, like, it's, it's, it's mind-blowing how fast that guy can be. But not fast like Shredder fast, just, like, perfectly fast. Uh, <laughs> anyway, tight like a taiga. There you go. Uh, he's a space god. Um, are modes just basically shifting the major scale around? Um, yes, that's exactly what the modes are. Like, I... Okay, so Austin Fitch. Are, oh, okay, are modes just basically shifting the major scale around? Question mark. Like, I know what modes are. I just don't know how to utilize them. Austin, I just want to make sure you've seen my, um, my uh, modes part one video um, because that discusses, like, where modes really hit hardest, which is modes... They're just shifting the major scale on, yes, but it's the chord progression that makes that happen. So watch my modes part one video, and that talks about how modes relate better to chords, and it gives you a better understanding. Um, bebop, best mode ever. Well, that's that's a mixture between Ionian and Mixolydian, so okay. Um, uh, as an outsider, what's your opinion on intelligence? I don't know what that means. So <laughs> can you give an example of a modal chord progression? Sure. A modal chord progression. Okay, Cheddar, you're you're going crazy. This is great. Okay, um, no, I've not. Uh, Nick, I've not seen John Mayer by himself. I've just seen John Mayer with Den Company. All right. So somebody says, can you give an can you give an example of a modal chord progression? Absolutely. So before I do that, um, I'm going to say, um, what key do you want me to write this in? What what key? I can't hear you. I'm just going to wait till I see the first key. And don't make it a stupid key. I'm no, kidding. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. Uh, C. Okay, Nick. Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's writing in. All right, well, Nick, Nick picks C. Okay, so let's just start. Um, let's just start. Okay, I just don't know what play modes necessarily. I don't know if uh, that makes sense. Yeah, Austin, um, email me at stitchmethod at gmail dot com. I'll I'll go over some things with you. Okay, so a modal chord progression, very, very, very easy to understand. First, we need to find out what chords can we play in the key of C. Well, those notes are going to be C major, uh, not notes, chords. C major, C major, D minor, E minor. Uh, F, G, A, and B minor seven flat five. Oh, sorry, oh A minor. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And B minor seven flat five. Okay, but now, oh sorry, huh? I've actually played the right chord. Now the thing is, all those chords belong to the key of C, and to make a modal progression, all that means is pick an uh, like a chord that's not a one. Okay, so I'll wait. Pick a chord. Don't don't do seven because it sounds like. When you write on in the, in the low green mode, uh, one through six, give me a number. First, hey, what's up, Bill? Hey, doing, buddy? I'll see you Monday. Another personal student. Okay, two, Dorian, done. Okay, two. Everyone likes two. All right, so I'm gonna write a, a modal progression, and all that means is I'm sticking with the key of C, and I'm starting on chord number two, which is the D minor. Same chords. So now if I play D minor, F, and G. Oh, Tom, Tom, I did get your season greeting, and I loved it. I'm starting to email you back. I've been really, like, losing my brain cells. I was going to email you, but it was awesome. And I love your outfit. Your scarf looks good. Okay, so now here's a modal progression in the key of C. It's D Dorian. I'm starting on the 2 chord. I'm going to the 4 chord, to the 5 chord. Let me see if I can get a good loop of that. Okay, good loop. Here we go. Is this the best thing in the world? No, but it'll do. Okay, so now I'm just going to use my C major scale of the solo because we're in the key of C, and that's going to force this chord progression because it starts on the two, forces my C major scale into Dory mode. sound major at all. The reason being is because that Dorian chord progression forced my C major scale into D Dorian mode. So you're just using straight up C major scale and the D becomes the root. Boom! Austin Finch, you've done it. That's it. That's that's it. Done. You got it. All right. Um, so there we go. Yes. Thoughts on the 11. I don't... Oh, uh, wait. The song? The song. I'm trying to picture it. Um, in the, it's, it's in 11. I know the song. Oh, no, no, yeah. I mean, something. I don't know. Uh, sounds like Neil in Ohio. Yes. Okay, good. What was your first fish show? 
and what tune grabbed you by the boo boo? Okay, so um, Matt Mannering, what's my first fish you and, and what? <laughs> And what song got uh, grabbed by the boo boo? Okay, so I'll tell you. My first fish show, um, uh, t -t 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 my first fish show was, oh my god, October 21st, 96 or 95, 96. And they, they, they opened up with the a cappella, um, Star Spangled Banner. And I'm gonna screw this up because I don't know how to play it. But the song that got me the most, let's see, I'm gonna really butcher this. I never, I haven't really played this. Uh, I kind of faked my way through it. Um, uh, That song, everybody know what song that was? That was a song that grabbed me by the boo-boo. When I saw that live in concert, and I'll discuss it, I, like I was just like, what the F? Yes, Sloth. Sloth got when I, when they play Sloth, I was like, I was like, are you kidding me? What was that? That was so good. And I'll tell you the story about my first um um my first fish show was is at Madison Square Garden and my, my me and my friend Dave, um, we had tickets all the way up in uh in um yeah I don't even know what key it is in Scott I don't even know like what it was but thank you Scott for like jabbing me um so I never played sloth cut me some slack Jack um so we were in Madison Square Garden and it was like we we're up in the way up in the section I might have told you this and um and <laughs> sorry Cheddar Cheddar Kung Pao I saw you block that guy but that was really funny so I, I appreciate that um yeah Cheddar's on top of it so I was up in um um section three in this i think i might have told you guys this, this story and i was with my friend dave and this guy like pokes me in the shoulder and he's like excuse me do you know where section four is and i was like yeah it's like right on the floor like right there and he takes these two tickets out and he's like this is our first fish show he's like my wife is pregnant i don't know what the floor is going to be like um can you uh can you do you, you want to switch and my friend and i were like yeah so we just like grabbed these tickets for section four and my first fish show is in section four um, of uh, Madison Square Garden and watching Trey and the Boys and it was awesome. So uh, that was cool. Um, yeah, good times, bad times. I can tell you, like, I, I caught a really good good times, bad times. I think July fourth uh, might have been ninety nine, two thousand at Camden, and they had the and they had the uh, um, uh, they had the fireworks going off, and that was that was really cool. And uh, so there you go. That was that. Um, anyway, uh, more questions. I don't have a ton of time. Um, in the mind of the went uh, gin. Um, I have to listen to that one. I mean, that that's just gonna be. That's gonna be a C mix of Lydian, but it goes off. I know it goes off. But the problem is, is like with the in the mind of life stuff, you kind of need, um, you kind of need the um, the rest of the band there because they totally help change everything that's happening. How can input modes to songwriting? Um, I can do like songwriting and modes things, but I can't just I can't just that. You go into the next night with Buddy Miles? What? No. What? When? When? Wait, Scott, talk, text me. I don't know what, you know what that means, Scott. Um, Saturday's Children, uh, that will be one of my first in the mind ofs when we get to the uh, the new year. Um, I'm, I'm on vacation next week. It's a long overdue vacation with me and my family. So, um, uh, like, I mean, I promised you uh, chalk dust, and that was like six months late. But um, in the mind of Saturday's, Saturday's Children um, uh, will come out soon. It's funny. You said, how do I rate John McLaughlin? Now, what's really funny is I had a teacher that worked for me, who was like one of the best guitar players I've ever heard in my entire life, named John McLaughlin. I was like, oh, you know I know him? And I was like, oh, no, you're referring to the jazz guitar player. I haven't really listened to him uh, that much. So, I, you know, Scott, you can see this guy, Scott, talking. He's my longtime friend. He knows I don't really listen to a ton of music. Um, and, uh, hey, but we did the chalk. We did get the chalk dust. You did get the chalk dust. Um, oh, no, okay, no. I see what you're saying, Scott. No, uh, that would be cool. Is it essential to true bypass? I have no... Um, you can ask Scott that, and even if my friend Brian is is watching, Scott and Brian are more on the gear than I am. I I, I just plug in and play. Uh, that's just I, I'm more concerned with the with the uh, with the puzzle of said fretboard. Um, and, and so, uh, <laughs> um, Ian Anderson, you and me both, brother. I don't know what that comment was for Cheddar, but thank you for being here, Cheddar. Um, again, Cheddar gave a really good, honest review of Fish. He didn't really like him, but then he kind of started listening to Picture of Nectar. Um, how do you rate uh, Johnny Marr? I don't. What are key... okay? So why are keys like C, G, A, and E so common? Well, because uh, the, the question is like why are key, why are keys like C, G, A, D, E very common, but not like G sharp, C sharp, B flat, all that stuff? Well, because you we're biased. I mean, you have to think about um, 
in 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 um oh well, let's talk about Gary Moore in a second, okay? But in um oh my god, what the hell was I just talking about? This is like <laughs> Um, oh, okay, so uh, we are we are biased about keys as guitar players. See, there, there is. Um, we listen to as guitar players. We listen to a majority, maybe of, um, of of rock music. Okay, and rock music is written a lot by the guitar players, and those guitar players are used to playing C's, G's, A's, E's, and D's. They don't really like thinking about you know a B flat or an E flat. Um, but when you're playing, so rock music that's driven by guitars is biased towards that. But if you were to classical music, if you were to listen to music, uh, jazz, something that's heavy with horns or piano, they they don't mind writing in any key. So you, you start to see more of Fs and B flats, E flats, and A flats um, because those instruments aren't uh, trained or honed in as much on, on these Cs, Gs, Es, As, and Ds as guitar players are for rock. I hope that made sense. Um, yes, okay. <laughs> there you go. So I, I say, um, that's great. Good, good job. Thanks for being here live and, and shitting on me. Appreciate it. Uh, okay, so what is your approach to soloing over whipping post? Uh, B minor. I haven't really tried it. So let me uh, let me get a, in the mind of in the mind whipping post. Right, that'd be a good one. Okay. Uh, are there any particular concerts that you regret not going to? Are there any concerts I regret not going to? No. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Oh, wait, okay, Doug, Doug Guinea, Doug, how do you pronounce your name? Okay, is it Doug, Doug Ginny, Doug Guinea, D-O-G-I-N. I want you, to, I'm going to talk right to you, my man, because I've been looking for you for a little bit. Um, so give me one second, I, I, I just want to address this, this guy here. Uh, Doug, oh, Doug in New York, oh my god, oh my god, Cheddar. That was the stupidest thing I've ever done in my entire life. Doug in New York. Can we just take a moment here to realize how stupid I was? Okay. Doug in New York. <laughs> I don't know. These things go by so fast. <sighs> yeah, don't mind me helping you through the gauntlet of guitar, but you can crap on me for getting a name wrong. Fine. Fine. For, if I had a nickel for every time I heard Ian, okay, whatever. But Doug in New York. Doug. You're my man who, who, who first, uh, Long Island baby, I'm from Smithtown, Doug. I'm talking right to Doug right now, everybody, so give me a, give me a, a second. Um, you, you had emailed me a question about Over the Hills and Far Away, correct? And you also said you had contacted me uh, about um, guitar lessons. And, and I want you to email me again about guitar lessons because I, I have some openings. I'm going through my wait list. I remember your name being early, but I couldn't remember who it was, and the list was huge. And so, um, so anyway, so do email me if you're still interested. Doug in New York, or as I'm going to call you, Duggini. All right, so back to, uh, back. oh, crap. Okay, more more questions. Oh, as I'm, okay. Um, if you have openings, keep me in mind, too. Kevin, I, I, Kevin, you're, you're in my mind. I thought I thought you were waiting. I thought you were also going to, I'm, now I'm talking to Kevin. Kevin has taken some lessons. I thought you were going to contact me when you were ready for your next uh, hour-long uh, Mind F session with Stitch. So just, uh, you can contact me, Kevin, no problem. And Doug, I apologize. Um... There we go. Okay, so back to the questions. Do you ever mess around and play in open tunings? No, I really don't play. Um, I really don't. I, I don't know, Kevin. I um, I don't. I don't really um, play in open tunings that much. And I, I that's something I want to. Uh, how can we learn the major scales faster? It's taking me some time. All right. Uh, the question is by I don't even want to pronounce his name because uh, I'm gonna get it wrong. How can we learn the major scale faster? Uh, it's uh, is taking some time, man. Now my question to you is, have you seen the Stitch Method major scale video. It doesn't cover all of the major scales, but it makes it really easy to kind of understand what's happening on that fretboard. So, I, hey, Zach in Memphis, first time live. Nice to have you. Um, so, watch the Stitch Method major scale. It's going to put a lot in perspective for you, I promise. What age do you think is the right? Uh, the eight or nine years old is the perfect start if you're really dedicated. Um, because they need the strength, but if, if you really want to do it, oh my god, the bigger the beer, the better the player. Yes, that's very true. <laughs> um, I've never been to Mississippi. Yes, this uh, this is the uh, Fred Instruments uh, Deadbolt. This thing's a monster. This thing's great. I, 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 I should be playing it more. I, uh, I do love it. Oh, the question is, what was my first ever concert? I'll answer this question gladly. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, can you make can you make another series for you to me? Yeah, I'll be making more series. Series 
for you to me. Um, my first concert was Def Leppard with Ugly Kid Joe opening up for them. No, uh, hold on. No, I lied to you. Yeah, yeah, no. Nope, strike that. Wait a second. It was Ugly Kid opening, but it wasn't Def Leppard. No, first concert was Vince Neil opening up for Def Leppard. That's what it was. Vince Neil. And it was at um, um, Jones Beach. And I think I've already told you a story. And I've never been to a concert before. My friend's brother was working there. And we got, like, really close. I didn't know what to expect. I remember just looking at the stage. And we were close with those speakers. And they had the fog going. And uh, all of a sudden, like, the lights go out. <sighs> crowd roars. And the band, boom. And this lady comes out wearing these fishnet stockings. <laughs> and I, like, I look at my friend Mark. I'm like, Mark, who's the... Who, What's with the girl in fishnets? And he's like, that's Vince Neil. And I was like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's Vince Neil. And then <laughs> that was my first concert, very first note. So there you go. That was, <laughs> I think I was like 14 years old. All right, so I missed a lot of questions there. And the uncool looking guitar service. <laughs> Sorry. How old am I? I'm 38. I'm over the hill. Don't listen to me. Don't trust anyone over 30. Uh, do you like Deadbolt or Frank Languiduck? Um, Ooh, well, it depends. You know, my first one, the question was, do I like my Languiduck copy or do I like my Deadbolt? It, it really, who is your favorite player? If your favorite player is Jerry Garcia, go for the Deadbolt. If your favorite player is um, Trey or if you like hollow bodies, you know, go for go for uh, the other one. I, I think that, uh, um, I, I think they're both very versatile, but I just like the lightweight, the lightweightness. This guitar is not heavy. I mean, it's not heavy. I just like the lightweight versatility of, of the hollow body, okay, uh, the, of the Ernesto. Um fan of Tony Iommi. No, I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not that I don't not like him. It's just I don't. And I don't really listen to a lot of music. And, and that's not... No, I don't. I don't even know what that means, Albert. So what does that mean? What does that even mean? I'm 38 and I'm so, like, over the loop. I had some difficulty understanding Sean's secondary dominance video. Can you discuss secondary dominance? Well, I have to look at his video first before I do, because I don't... I want to see what he says. Um, and I haven't checked the video. I saw it come out. But, do watch... Um, the secondary dominant, I believe, I, I caught, I was talking about it, he was talking about how you can use the dominant chord, the five chord of the chord you're going to. Um, so if you're going to a C chord, you would use a G7, and you'd pop the G7 in before your chord change. But also, you can look at my borrowed chord sequence uh, video, and that, that will help also, I believe. Oh man, this is all going here. Uh, don't trust anyone under 50 except Ian. I like it. Oh, it's a metal term. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, let me listen to metal. I'm sorry. Have you been posed by Trey live what song was it oh uh no I haven't seen Trey by himself I haven't seen Trey solo unfortunately um I would but the the best solo show I've ever seen in my entire life and I I really am pissed because I can't remember the venue and I can't remember the year but it was <laughs> I'm not gonna say that word anymore promise I'll be very very conscious here it goes I'm turning off the um button there it is no more you will never hear it again for the one concert that blew me away that was solo was Jeff Tweedy of Wilco, probably around the year 2000. He played by himself, and uh, and it was it was amazing. It was amazing. Um, oh, I said it. Ah, I said it. That button's faulty. Faulty button. Uh, that was good. That was a really good show. That moved me. It had me frozen. Uh, thank you, Guitar Hack. I'm, I'm glad that you were digging all the videos. Um, <laughs> I said again, but Kevin is Kevin. Kevin, he just emailed me. He's ready for another lesson. He just there it is. Um, I say the word a lot. Favorite blues lick? My, it's simple. I mean, the the, the the favorite blues lick of everyone's got to be the the minor third to the major third. Like, let's see, hold on, let's see, uh, let's see this one. That thing. With the, the minor third to the major third. To the one. To the five. And back to the one, but with... with hey, what's up, Mike? With the, with the flat seven bent to the one. I think it's just so wholesome. A way to... Uh, <laughs> my finishing move of kicking someone in the nuts. I'm glad you like that. That's that's what my finishing move would be. What kind of pick would I use on the acoustic? I use whatever pick I use on electric. I tend to use um, 0.96 or like 1.1 1 
millimeters. It, does, it doesn't matter what the finish because I'm a, I'm a sweaty dude who can grip his picks. Jam with Trey. Man, if, you, if, if I could jam with Trey, I, I'll tell you right now what would happen. I would... I would get a phone call, hey, this is Trey, and I'd be like, oh my god, this is so awesome, and then he'd be like, I want you to come and jam with me, this would never happen, right, and I'd be like, yes, what song, and he'd be like, this song, and I'd be like, okay, perfect, and then I'd get on stage, and I would look at Trey, and I would look at the rest of the band, and I would just freeze, and probably crap my pants, and throw up, and then walk off stage, and then that would be it, so I'm just letting you know, that's what probably would happen, but in my dreams, I'd rip it, okay, so anyway, so there you go, so, uh, yeah, uh, that'd be nice. When is a better solo through progression in the same scale? When it's in a key. Like, if you have a song that's in a key, then you don't, and you can use the same key scale. <laughs> Cheddar. You, if anybody has a YouTube channel, Cheddar Kung Pao has to be your moderator. Guy's brilliant. <laughs> anyway. Well, if if each of my subscribers kicking five bucks, we could pay Ch Trey to jam. I, I would not want to pay Trey to jam with me. I think it would be torture for him. I would just shake his hand and say, thank you so much for making me push myself to where I am and being able to support my family with the knowledge. Uh, your man's new rig. Oh, I got oh I got a new, uh, I got a text from my students, okay. Uh, blah, I keep on saying that. Again, I'm like my right hand. Trey, yeah, you know what's, okay, so this guy brings something up really, um, really perplexing which is he says he has a hard time anchoring his right hand you know what you see a lot of players like touch the guitar here they'll even like pull the pickup and 95 percent of the guitar players out there do this but some of them have a floating hand and one of the guys that has a floating hand is trey you know he's very he kind of like braces his arm here and he just uses his wrist and it's so perplexing but I, that's something that he had to have done from when he was a really kid uh, uh, from a kid and just like perfected it I, I try to do it but i find it very very it, it puts a lot of my like responsibility on my shoulders and i, I hate that so um yeah it's it's it, it's really really hard to not brace for me anyway that's that so uh i gotta get going in a couple seconds and this was just a live q a i hope you're enjoying it uh, but I have to do a lot of stuff right now, believe it or not. Uh, really, I thought that anchoring was bad form. No, no, anchoring's good. I mean, anchoring's great. It, it helps you get, it helps take the weight off. Again, like, Quicksilver, you know, the thing is, is like, I anchor all the time because it helps you put in perspective and, and it puts the responsibility on your, on your fingers versus your arm and your shoulder. Uh, but, you know, one of my favorite guitar, one of my favorite guitar players doesn't anchor, but three of my other guitar players do. Yeah, n n right. Just like Cheddar said, nothing is wrong or right, but if you're trying to anchor, I enjoy anchoring. You know, Jerry Garcia anchors, um, Jerry Page anchors, when you watch them. So so you see that stuff, but Trey, you know, he's loose, he's loose, man. So it's totally up to you and what you can do. Each has their benefit when you can perfect it, if that makes sense. So try. Cheddar Kung Pao doesn't anchor. Well, you've heard it from the God himself. He doesn't anchor. Cheddar, I want you to email me because I'm going to show you how to anchor on the guitar, okay? Good. All right. So anyway, so uh, let's see. Oh, hold on for one second. Hold on, just everybody freeze for a second. Hey man, what is a better thought process if you had to choose playing the chord of the moment or playing modally? My guitar teacher and I have been discussing this. Jared, first of all, good to hear from you. When you say playing playing modally, you mean playing within the key and playing that scale that belongs to the chord progression, and or moving the chord tones around. Um, my, 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 I, ch I tend to favor the chord tones. I mean, I, I do, but there's a time and a place, you, you know, um, yeah, key versus tones, right? That's exactly what I was getting to. I, I don't think it's a verse at all. I really don't think of a key verse anything. I think it's key, scale, and chord tones. In my humble opinion, that's like my style, which I love. Again, I'm not trying to play like Trey or Jerry or Jimmy Page. It's my style, and, and there you go. There you go. Hey, Mason, are you kidding? <laughs> that's our style. Jay, that's right. Well, keyinmyin.com, you can check it out. It's really good. Mo was my favorite. Mo was my favorite stooge. Did I mention something about stooges? Miss it? Anyway, guys, I got to go. You know, there's a lot of you here, and I can spend all night talking to you. I have one more video coming out for the new year. I have no idea what it is. Uh, I'll think about it. Um, before the new year, hopefully, if not, Jason, you're too funny. Um... Jason's website, key am I in? Now, I'm going to talk to Jason. Jason, did we talk about... Did we, did, did we, no problem, buddy. Did we, uh, did we make edits yet? Or was that an idea that we are talking about? I, I'm in, I'll go to the website and see. 
But all of you who have chimed in, um, we're closing in on, on 2018, so 2017 has been spectacular. You guys have been awesome, you, you, you know, uh, really, and I hope that uh, one thing in the comments section, whatever you want to learn from 2018, uh, put in the comments, like, I want to win this, 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 like, you've avoided this. John, thank you. Good to see you. Uh, nice. Um, happy holidays to, to everyone. Peace out. So, you know, anything that you want me to focus on 2018, whether it's in the mind of, Masters of Melody, some blue stuff, a best guitar playing year of my life. That's nice to hear, Albert. I'm glad that, I don't know if it's because of me, but I'm glad that you had the best year uh, of guitar playing. Okay, Lynn, what are you doing? First of all, <laughs> I should have ended the stream. That was very nice of you. That was very nice of you, Kaylin. That was sweet and, and very appreciated. Um, all right, so I'm going to get going. You guys are pretty pretty awesome. And um, I'll see you, I think, in a live feed probably Wednesday night of next week because I'm out of here uh, for GuitarCon. That makes sense, Kaylin. Thank you. Get your votes in. If you guys have, you remind me again, Kaylin, if you, if you um, guys have... Uh, entries in on that um, uh, contest I have going about Stevie Ray. Get your votes in. All of you, peace out. Have a great night. It's because of you. No, Albert, it's because of you. I'm having a great night because of all you guys. All right, guys, have a great night. Talk to you soon. Mike, good to see you. Robert, bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys.